right. Welcome back to the Built to Grow podcast. I'm your host, Tim Lyons, back in the studio after two weeks in Oklahoma City, joined by Randy Angston. What's up, man? How we doing? How was your trip? Trip was amazing, guys. Uh, For those of you who don't know, my daughter uh, is in, uh, she rides horses. She's an equestrian, uh, Arabian, Mm -hmm. and uh, they had the Youth Nationals uh, in Oklahoma City. So at the fairgrounds, the whole thing, and it was absolutely insane there's different age groups and stuff and so she's 12 years old so she's in the 14 and under group she last year her last class she won national champion and then their first class she won national champion at this one hell yeah so we went to dinner that night. all you do is win national champions I mean, that's all you do you just wake up and piss excellence uh, that's what we do <laughs> but she ended up doing really well ended up with five titles with three national champions two reserve national champions and um, she's beaten kids that are six years older and are 18 and under some of the classes combined and stuff it's absolutely insane her coach is like this isn't normal <laughs> this is not normal so i wonder why well she comes from good genes <laughs> uh, even though even though i would don't want to get on any horses anytime soon i'll tell you but uh We've uh, we've invested. We have got a couple of horses now, and uh, yeah, it's exciting. It's just great to see all the hard work. She's up there, you know, at the barn, five a.m. and stuff. So, anyways. discipline, consistency, coaching. Oh, look, success. S- super pumped about that. I mean, and really, to be honest with you, um, the re- the reason I bring that up is that I've been I've been able to be gone for two weeks, yeah. right? I haven't been able, I haven't had to get pulled back in. I was just everything's just happening around me. The problems are getting handled, and it's just like pretty it's a pretty cool feeling and i know a lot of gym owners would like to be in that position and that's kind of what this podcast is exactly about is is when it's time for the gym owner to step out of the operations and and the things that have to change right but before we get into that i do want to give a quick shout out uh to legacy (laughs) podcasting guys uh, i'm sitting i'm holding a oak and eden uh in bottle finish it's a uh it's a bourbon and it was gifted to us by the guys that do our podcast, uh, you know, uploads and stuff. You guys are listening to Apple Podcasts, how it gets there, uh, the guys at Legacy Podcasting. And I was looking at this uh, label and it says, bottled for built to grow. And it's like really, it's like a custom bottle. So guys, that's awesome. If, you, if you're on YouTube, you can check it out. Boom, right there. Yeah. Nick Nick can cut to it. Beep. <laughs> there you go. But uh, super pumped to uh, try that. I haven't drank in months. Yeah. Months. I got all that bourbon behind me and I don't even, don't even touch it. We need so, a reason. Well, the Growth Summit. That's it's coming that's up. The Saturday after party, we've got this whole place rented out. It's going to be really exciting to to do that. But uh, let's get into the show. So, so here's the scoop. You know, gym owners, um, you know, micro gyms, training gyms. You know, you find yourself wanting at some point to not be in the business every day, or the ability to make a choice to mm-hmm. to go on vacation or go do something else. I mean, honestly, there's a million things you can do with time, but if your time's shackled to the business and the operations, you can start to resent your business. Uh, sure. I know I know. there's a lot of gyms that we work with that this is the situation they're currently in is I've got to get out of the day-to-day. I'm in there too much. I mean, I love my business, but I don't love it like I used to, sure. or I don't love it that much to not do anything other than that. So, so there's, um, I was having a co- coaching call with one of the gym owners we're working with. And, you know, I told him the, the, the skill sets change, you mm-hmm. know, the leadership skill needs to be brought to the top, right? In order for you to have a team that can run the play, they need to trust their leader and yeah. they have to be trained to do so. But if you're constantly going behind them and doing the work for them, it'll never happen. Yeah, absolutely. So a couple steps to this process. Uh, number one is, you know, and it's hard, it's, it's really weird to say this, but honestly, it might be the most truth is you have to care less. There you go. What do I mean by that? You have to care less. Well, Tim, I'm never going to not care. Well, of course not. But you have to care less. And what I mean by that is you, you can't be so anal about every single detail that you won't allow anybody else to do it because you just care for it to be perfect. Yeah. And that's going to get in the way of you being able to let go. You just can't care as much. And it's, it's weird to say, but when you, when you get it, you understand, you get it. It's like, oh, see, I let the team do it. And yeah, maybe I'm not going to nitpick that exact little thing. I would have done a little different, but you got to let it go. Well, they say that, yeah, perfection is the enemy of progress, right? And mm-hmm. in this situation, if you're the one that's cleaning up, you know, from behind the scenes or, or, or you know, backing them up and doing the work or finishing mm-hmm. it or not even letting them take the reps 
that's the exact op. I mean, mm-hmm. you, there is no progression, right? You, you're always putting yourself back in the seat, and it's always going to come back to you. Yeah. And uh, one of the things that you've always, I mean, from day one when we started working together, mm-hmm. <clears throat> one of the things that you've always said and always kind of uh, had a belief around is, you know, about 80% success rate, right? Like if they can do the same job about 80% as effective as you, mm-hmm. put them in the seat and then let's let's coach them up and fill the gap. Yeah, yeah, it's true because everything can be done two different ways or ten, ten different ways. You, you've heard that saying. You, there's you know a million ways to skin the cat, right? Like mm-hmm. it's an analogy. <laughs> what saying, a weird analogy, but weird. Who skins <laughs> cats? I don't know. You skinning cats is or you know. So it's it's a weird, weird way to say is like there's a million ways to get to the end line, yep. you know, to the finish line. And you know, Zach just ch- chatting with him, you know, this morning. You know, we're we're dealing with a deal with semi private pro. Mm-hmm. And I asked him like, "Hey, did you email everybody else? You know?" And he decided to go this way, and I'm t- I would have done it differently. But like, what difference does it make? At the end of the day, the thing's going to get fixed, and the communication is going to get out. I can't care so much that I obsess over making sure that he does everything exactly how I would do it. Mm-hmm. It's just not it's not worth it. And it, that's why you hire somebody and put them in the position, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, at the other end of the spectrum, you you know, before when we sat down, you're like, oh, I didn't know any of this was going on. I didn't. And that's the beauty of having somebody else in the position doing mm-hmm. it also yeah. is, you know, like he like he's taking know, the he's, arrows. Exactly. <laughs> he's, he's protected, you know, the, the, he, like you said, yeah, he's protecting your back and he's handling the issues mm-hmm. without having to go uphill or bring it to your attention. Yeah. And there's so much to be said about that. You know, like every back to gym owners every single day. Mm-hmm. What do you do? Oh, I, you know, I'm just putting out fires constantly, putting out fires constantly. Putting out, is nobody on your team capable of handling any of the fires that, you know, started? They are, but you don't let them. You don't give yeah, them the authority yeah. to do so. You don't exactly. Let them. So here's the here's the real deal. Like, there's let's just take three things that need to happen. Number one, somebody's got to train clients. Number two, somebody's got to make sales and say. Number three, somebody's got to program. Okay. There's just those those are three things that have to get done. Here's the reality: a person's got to do one of those three things, mm-hmm. and it's either you or them. And so when we say give them the authority. We really coach gym owners to coach their employees up. Yes. What do I mean by that? So like if the director or the owner is in charge of sales, but the director or the owner isn't there, it, well, let's just say, let's do, this is a perfect example. There's a coaching team, there's a director, and then there's an owner. There's three levels. Mm-hmm. If the director's in charge of sales, and the director's out of that seat for vacation, sick, whatever, and there's a sales appointment, we we like to coach the coaches up to take that sales responsibility versus the owner down. So that's exactly how it's set up here. Mm-hmm. I'm not coming back in on a Saturday morning to do sales consultations because we coach our coaches, our team, to be able to handle that in the absence of our fitness director. And that's probably a big aha for a lot of folks. It's like, oh crap, coach is out. I got to come in and train sessions. Well, cross train, cross train your your team to be able to backfill people. I was just going to say, when was the last time you had to pull a session? Never. I mean, <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I, mean I mean, we're talking uh, the old location. Yeah. Prior to 15? 2015 was the last, yeah. So that's when we moved over here and probably three years before that. Yeah. Think about that, guys. I mean, and the reason I'm, I'm saying that is because Tim is, you know, he owns a gym. He's in the same seat you are. This system is what's allowed him to not have to go back into operation because we've built it with intention. This is how we handle this problem mm-hmm. when, when those problems come up so that Tim's not. I mean, that was the reason I wanted to say that. It's been years, 12 years, 12, 12 years since Tim's had mm-hmm. to coach a session in his gym. I don't know a single gym owner that I've uh, in any of our ecosystem that's in that same position that's, that can say that probably. Probably not. I mean, it, it, there's two reasons for that. One is what we're talking about today. The other reason is maybe they enjoy going so, in and do that. Cho- but choice. Choice is, choice is the caveat, right? Having that choice to be able to, hey, yeah, I feel like, you know, let me go knock out this big group workout tonight. It's Thanksgiving. I want to run it. You know, cool. And do I remind it. gym owners all the time, like, you, you, you have the option of walking in your gym and shaking hands and kissing babies and, like, going above and beyond jump in with a coach and just i was just you know, doing help. that i was just i was just out we were getting we used the restroom walking yeah. back there's a train there's training going on and i walked out there i go one of our longtime clients ping you go ping so i'm so glad you got a chance to see me today <laughs> <laughs> she's laughing oh it's an honor it's an honor yeah. joking around 
And she's like, you look like Jesus. I go, El Savior <laughs> with a big beard. I'm like, yeah, thank you. Thank you. But that's a choice, right? That's not a requirement. And that's the yeah. biggest thing that we're trying to trying to really, I mean, that's like the overarching takeaway here too is when you build the systems into the business and you build a structure that has a plan for backfill and, and um, coverage and things like that, you're not in a position to have to walk back in your gym and fulfill those yeah. those roles and responsibilities. And that's huge. I mean, that, that allows you as a business owner to keep your attention and your time on the areas that are going to impact your life and, you, you know, the business as a whole. Absolutely. As opposed to doing something that, you know, we're paying somebody, no offense, there's nothing wrong with it, but like those three levels, that's the lowest on the totem pole. Let's, you know what I mean, the coaching seat. So let's make sure that you as the pinnacle of the business mm -hmm. isn't forced to be doing, you know, the lowest tasks yeah. within the business. I mean, and it comes to everything. It could be Jan Sand, right? It could be cleaning up after things. It could be clean, wiping down the bathrooms. All of those types of things. Somebody should have overlapping coverage on those responsibilities and it shouldn't be you the owner. It, right. And it, with a small team, it's it's going to there's going to be some cross and, and you know honestly, you should every coach should be able to like in a small team, you should be able to have the newest coach be able to take a sale the, the veteran coach or anybody in between be able to do programming or answer the phone or whatever in a small team. Sure. But as you grow and there's levels and the org chart starts to, you know, spread out left and right and go vertically and all of a sudden now you got layers. I think the biggest keystone, you know what a keystone is? It's, it's in an arch and it's that yeah, one the, the, block the at block the top. That, yeah, it solidifies the Yeah, you pull the that arch. out, the whole thing falls, right? The keystone to the freedom of a gym owner, I believe is the fitness director. Oh yeah. That's the, that's the key to freedom. And the reason is that person is doing your job. Mm -hmm. That's it. The person that you hire as a director or GM or whatever you want to call it, we call it fitness director. They handle everything the owner would handle without them right? i mean i mean honestly if we go and everybody's like well where nobody can find a unicorn like zach like nobody where i can't find, i don't have anybody on my team zach was not this way when he we hired him he was a coach mm -hmm. he we didn't hire him as a director he had no business management skill set until we brought him up mm -hmm. gave an opportunity i gave him the training i held his hand he learned from me. We're constantly in communication, and he's developed into what he is today. It didn't. Ha he was a coach, guys, and he wasn't even the, the top lead coach. Yep. When he when he got that job, when we lost our fitness director Brent before we gave the job to yeah. Zach. Zach wasn't the head guy. Yeah. There was a guy named Mike. Mike. Yeah. And and I gave them both an equal opportunity, and they approached it completely differently, and I chose. Zach over Mike, no offense, Mike's a great dude, but like I saw more potential in Zach. And honestly, you guys have people on your team right now that that fit the criteria of what Zach had at, at the time. Yep. So it's not really an excuse. Like everybody's like, yeah, to find a guy to come in with the skill set he has now off the street, impossible. Sure. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't, in, unless Zach moved to Montana, because probably will one day, and there's a gym <laughs> that hires them. Like, that's yeah. not going to happen. That's what I was going to say. It's, it's probably coming from another location or something like that, and <clears throat> difficult to find, to one, find it, and then also find somebody who's looking for, mm -hmm. you know, another opportunity. So, so yeah. you've got to bring them up from within. Developing. And so that's, that's the key, is the keystone to freedom is having a director, but having a somebody on your team is going to be that person. Mm-hmm. It's very difficult to bring somebody from the outside to do the sales, to lead the team, especially when those that, that team's been there for years, and then you bring somebody over the top of them. Ooh. It, it, it can be done, and in fact, it does happen all the time, and then what happens is turnover, and then you gotta replace, and then by the time the next batch of coaches are in, this person's already in that role. Do you wanna give a real life example of that? Because I mean, that kind of goes back to the conversation you were having the coaching client, and uh, sure, sure, you know, yeah. like specifics of how to, how to kind of find that person on your team, maybe. Well one of the big roles of the director is sales mm -hmm. and programming and all the things. I mean, we've solved the solution. Like guys, if you need a programming solution, send me a private pro it's, it's done. Like just go look at that and you'll, you'll realize it's built for exactly what you need it for. So I, I also really believe the gym should own the programming, not a specific coach. Anyway, top big time, down, big time. Yeah. That's, that's, that's our belief. It's a delivery system. It's your product, all the things, but sales, 
sales. Sales is a, a acquired skill. I mean, it's a unique skill, especially doesn't align with a lot of trainer brains because mm -hmm. of the. If if, uh, if I could, I'd do it for free mentality. Yeah, the officer. I mean, we could talk about the mindset of a coach on another episode, but like it's it's not a very common trait that you could be a great coach and also a great salesperson. Sure. It's just like they're two opposite ends of the spectrum. One's sell, 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 money driven over here. It's altruistic helping. It's like they're opposite. And we see that in a disc assessment. Yeah, you exactly. See that in personality types. I mean, <clears throat> you'll have evidence to that. And so one of our coaching clients probably listening, um, is out of the country, awesome guy. Uh, I had a great call with him and you know, he's like, Hey, three of my guys just really aren't a good fit for sales. One is shy. One talks too much. One's too green or whatever. There was reasons. Sure. I don't remember a hundred percent. And if he's sold on the fact that it's going to be impossible to have any of these people sell, which isn't that far fetched sure. because again, like we said, they're two ends of the spectrum. The fact that Zach has sales acumen is it is unicorn status, but again, he didn't start that way. Mm -hmm. So you also, there is, it, it's trainable. Yeah. So, and I think a disc assessment would be a great thing to do with these three particular coaches, but like, here's the deal. I said, listen, um, you know, in order for you to be able to hire somebody over the top, he was worried about the culture. And I'm like, yeah, I agree. Have a conversation, mm -hmm. tell them the truth. Hey guys, I need to get somebody in for sales. Which one of you three or all three of you have interest in doing sales? And he said to me that most likely none of them would. And then he's off the hook. Great. None of you guys are, are up for it. I've got to bring somebody in to do this job. There you go. And the funny thing is, and I was laughing about it. It's like, well, it's the truth. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's exactly what's happening. <laughs> so I think being transparent and this is where the leadership comes in, right? Like he has to go to the team and like, here's where we need to be. I'm doing all the sales and programming. I can't do it anymore. I need to step up a level. Which one of you three has interest? None of you three. Okay, well, listen, I got to bring somebody in. And then it's okay because they turn down the opportunity. There you go. And let's just say one of them wants to or two, all three of them. Then, then, it, then it's training them up and finding out, you know, that they really aren't that good. And then you let them down that way. Hey, listen, just you, you've got a 20% close rate. Like we've, we got to be at 80. Yeah. You know, here you go. So that's what I would recommend. Right. If, if you're an owner, you're doing the everything and you're listening to this podcast, shut, nodding your head. Yep. Mm hmm. That's you got to get the leadership skill set, get that fitness director in there or, or bring people in for particular skill sets that your team doesn't have or coach up. Mm hmm. There you go. That's it. And it might be something like you, you mentioned leadership. You know, that might be a skill set that's a little bit foreign to you as a business owner. Right. You might only have a couple of people working for you. You might ne have never been in a position where you've had to step out and be able to teach somebody the mm -hmm. skill sets that you know, that's where systems come into play. That's where, you know, creating, if you're the guy that shows up and you do things a specific way, but you don't have it documented, you yeah. don't have a process for it. Zach and I did a, a podcast that just came out that was on, you know, how to, um, like what you should and shouldn't be telling your team and things like that. <clears throat> and part of that is like, you know, you have to develop, but in order to allow the backfill and, and, the the team to move up you have to have a system in place for them to follow it can't be you being the business right and, and this is this is, guys this goes across every corner of the business everything that you have your hands on document it create a system around it and the reason the systems exist is so that somebody else let's say god forbid something happened to you as as the guy who does all those responsibilities you want your business to close in a month because you don't have somebody to, that can mm -hmm. it can sell you don't have somebody that can write programming like these are they're silly reasons. So I mean, <clears throat> not to paint a, uh, a a bigger dire picture around it, but there are reasons why systems are in place. Successful businesses use systems. We talked about the you know the McDonald's method and why they sell more hamburgers than anybody else. It's not because of their quality. Mm -mm. It's not because nobody can do it as good as Ray Kroc originally. No, he created the system that allowed every anybody, almost anybody to be in that seat, follow the system, get a similar result at the end. Yeah, robots. No. And, yeah, exactly. Right. But that's the that's what we, we want for our fitness businesses. Your business should run like a Starbucks. It should run like a, a McDonald's when it comes to the systems in place. Right. And if you can put that on paper, you develop your process around it. And it's, again, it's something that we coach a legitimate system. Here's the first step. Here's the second step. We went through that in the podcast too. When you have that system in place, 
that's the majority, like their 20% close rate should be 50, 60, even if they are horrible at the kind of like the, the personality or the position yep. themselves, they follow the system. They're going to get somewhat a similar result. Right. And you have, but you have to have that system right now. Most gym owners are that system. Um, you know, we've done our SOP in a day workshop where we help you guys create SOPs for the business. We'll make sure that's in the show notes. It's, it's things like that that allow you to actually have that freedom to step away from the business, put somebody else in, follow this system. You're going to get a similar level of success. Yeah. yeah. Period. Right. You can't wing it. The opposite no. of system is winging it. And so guys, you hear that word system all the time, like, eh, systems. Yeah. But honestly, you, you have a system probably you're doing right now. It's mm -hmm. just not documented. And that's the key to the whole passing down the knowledge is documentation. Um, quick story. My dad, uh, over the years ago, he would, uh, who's got hired for some job and it was like the guy ahead of him trained the guy below him. And it's like this, original SOP gets the, the, the game of telephone. Yeah. So like it, this person's doing that job and then they teach the person behind them or replacing them that job and it downhill versus, versus having a, he was like, man, it's, we, we created a whole training portal for employees because it was the guy that they were replaced. that was teaching them and they yeah. do things a little different. And so like, if you want to keep quality across all departments, you have to have a, uh, consistent training experience and processes that everybody follows the same exact way. Yeah. I think you, I think you and I were, did a podcast and you were talking about the roast beef, right? Why we cut the end, why they cut the ends yeah, off the roast beef, yeah. right? Perfect example. It's because <laughs> over the years, like that was lost in, in translation. Like the reason that was because of the size of the, the, the oven, oven back yeah. then. Right. But it had nothing to do with the quality of the roast. It's a great, so it's a great analogy. It's story, perfect for, yeah. for this, it's, you know, this situation, you know, when you, when you don't have a system to follow, if you didn't have a recipe written down and it was just word of mouth, generation over generation, things are going to change. Things are going to not be carried across the, the lack of understanding of why we cut the ends off the roast yeah. to put it in there wasn't oh. wasn't there so I mean, a great example of this is i was in oklahoma at the youth nationals and i couldn't understand why they did a thing a certain way and what the what it was was the color of the trophy <laughs> this okay. is this was sure. what i couldn't understand and i brought it back to this is the way it's always been done and nobody's questioned it i go that's why you need fresh eyes the youth trophies for national champion are this pewter silver color and then the second place which is reserve is like a coppery bronze color okay not gold and silver, the opposite almost. Yeah. Like it, the, the, the second place almost looks like it's gold. <laughs> yeah. The adults who they had an adult national champion there at the time, the uh, the adults it was gold for the national champion, silver for the second, very in line Standard. with the Olympics. Yeah. And, and I asked Julie, who's our the bar, I'm like, why is the adult gold and the uh, uh, national champion adult gold and the national champion for youth a pewter silver color, but yet the second place looks more like gold. Well, it's just the way it's been. <laughs> and I go, that's my point. Yep. There is no reasoning behind it. I bet you there was something happened where the trophies couldn't get made yeah, one year. There you go. Yep. And then they just kept it that way. Because if you looked at the trophies, you think the second place is first, just sure. by the color of, of goldish yeah, color. You know what I mean? What we're accustomed to, sure. And, and I was like, you know, you know, this was the probably the first year that I have all seen all the trophies in front of me. I'm like, this doesn't make sense. And so I was questioning it and there was no answer. It was because the oven was too small, 1958, you know, or 52 when the, that, that Chuck roast was getting, you know, the ends were getting cut off. It's <laughs> yeah. the same reason about the trophies. And so one thing that you can do with your team is as, especially the newest people coming in, we, we have this written in our handbook, your voice will be heard. You, you, it's your responsibility to question everything. There you go. And we welcome the question because how are you gonna get better? Um, you know, if there's a thing that we're doing that's stupid and we don't realize it and they come in as a fresh set of eyes and like, man, we, we just keep doing this thing, but like, I think we could do it this way better. That's your obligation to, to, bring, it, to bring it to Zach and we talk about in the team meetings. Uh, we do that with our programming, everything. Everybody has a voice. And I think that's a big part of the culture uh, within the team here is that, you know, like even the first first day on the job guy gets to question stuff. Yeah. And, and that's the only way that you're going to get better as a gym, guys, is, is letting people analyze. It's not, you know, it's not we do it this way because we've always done it that way. It has to be a reason. Perfect. And and that was going to the 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 neck or like what I kind of heard from that is the intentionality behind the systems and the intentionality behind why you do things a certain way. 
when you're challenged, like even, I mean, even outside of the gym, just normal life, right? Like if you have a belief around something, you better damn well have some conviction, yeah. right? You, you should have some reasons why you feel that way, why you do things a certain way. And if you don't, there might, there, there, there's a good chance there could be a better way to do it. Yeah. And having fresh eyes come in and, and I don't want to say challenge, but like ask the questions that come across like a challenge, yep. right? It gives you or it gives Zach or who, whomever that they're asking the question to consider, okay, why do we do this way? And if it's not intentional, chances are that's great feedback and you, man, maybe there is a better way to do it. There's a better way or there doesn't need to be done at all or whatever. It, so, but, it, but again, it brings back like the intentionality factor. Right? Why are we doing this? If we have a reason and this, and we're confident that this is the best way that we can do it, perfect. Now it's probably yeah. the right way. Yes. Why we're doing it this way? Oh, that makes sense. But right? but constantly, why do why we is do the things? Why is this national championship trophy silver in the adult school? It doesn't make sense, and right? They, and they don't have. There's, there's, there's a not a legit. It's just the way reason, it's always been. It's right? the way it's been. And I go exactly. That's yep. my point. I knew it was. The, I knew there was a reason that there or was, lack of there was, there was or no lack reason. of reason, which is a reason. So guys, leadership, uh, coaching up you know, Keystone, director, all the things we talked about. You probably want to listen to this episode a couple times, guys. This is the the linchpin, the thing that gym owners really, really want out of their business is to not be in the business. You hear, hear, hear the analogies, don't work in your business, work. It's stupid to say that. But you're get in the shower at four in the morning thinking about having to go into work and put fires out. Well, you're the person I'm talking to. Yeah. You're like, dreading it and you're staying in that shower an extra five minutes just letting that water run over your head because you really don't want to go in you're the person i'm talking about i love this business i love this gym i don't you know it's it's it's, it's a blessing at this point it, it feeds me it doesn't take from me it doesn't drain me it's pretty awesome to yeah. walk in even if i haven't been in here for a couple of weeks i just walk in i'm like yeah just nod your head and just like hey you built this thing right it's pretty cool so Want you to have the same feeling, guys. I'd love to see you in Chicago. Tickets are still on sale. We're coming to the end here. Um, I'd love to see you there. Uh, tickets, show notes, all the things. Uh, we got SOP in a workshop. SOP in a, in a day.com. Is that it for that? Yeah. SOP. Yeah. yeah. We'll make sure all that's in the show notes, guys. That's it for this episode. Uh, until next time, keep changing lives. See you on the next show. Bye. All right. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Built to Grow podcast. If you want more help growing your business, join our free Facebook group. Profit Accelerator, helping training gyms grow to $30,000 a month and beyond. We'd love to see you there. Go check out the show notes for the link and keep building something great. And we'll see you in the next episode.